Um, I will now uh, like to invite our champions uh, um, to, to address the, to open the day. Uh, since 2015, every uh, co-presidency appointed a climate champion, and today we have a pleasure to have with us the climate champion for COP25, Gonzalo Munoz, and the climate champion for COP26, uh, um, Nigel Topping. My friends, over to you. Great. Thank you, Elizabeth. It's wonderful to be with you today. Um, the day six of the Race to Zero Dialogues with a focus on energy. Um, I, want to, I was going to thank the whole list of partners, but you've already done it, Elizabeth. So in the interest of time, I'll move on. But, but you know, one of the things that we um, are so keen on, Gonzalo and I, and I think Irina typify this is what we call radical collaboration. We will only tackle the climate crisis if, uh, if, if, if the whole of society is mobilized. So, so everyone who's come together to create the energy dialogues today, thank you. Um, a big part of what we're working on is to project a common understanding of the sectoral pathways to zero emissions, um, something that um, Gonzalo um, with the Marrakesh Partnership pioneered last year. And, and thank you, Irina, for your vital help in creating version two of the Climate Action Pathways this year. Um, the, the other thing that we're really keen to promote, as well as radical collaboration around these pathways, is, is a better understanding of just how fast change can and is taking place. Um, you know, the, 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 there's a really nice paper that Michael Grubb published on um, the Women Business website, you can see that recently, showing that the current level of exponential growth is enough to put us on a 1.5 degree world. So we think this, this understanding of exponential change as costs keep coming down um, and deployment goes up. Um, and nowhere is that better exemplified than in the, in the renewables where, um, as we all know now, renewables are cheaper than coal or gas in most parts of the world. And of course, that's, that's only going in one direction. Um, um, and I, I think it's understanding that's really important because it means we can back ourselves as humans, as society, as, as businesses, as cities, as, as governments, we can back ourselves to go faster. Um, we can back our ability to innovate. And so I think this idea that we can, we can and are capable of innovating much faster than most people think is at the heart of what we're, the story that I hope we're going to hear much more about today. Gonzalo, over to you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Nigel, and, and 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 reinforcing what you said. In order to create that that net zero future, we need those transformative act, transformative action and the radical collaboration that you mentioned. We we know that it's absolutely feasible to have eighty percent of our electricity from renewable energy sources and hundred percent zero carbon by twenty fifty. That that is something that that's a track that is so clear. Uh, but also we could have energy infrastructure uh, resilient to, ma to market shocks uh, and, and, and much more resilient than fossil fuels. We've learned so much about that during this uh, COVID year. So ambitious climate action could uh, not only put us on track into everything that is related to climate action and green recovery, but also because it could create over 65 million new low carbon jobs in 2030. That's equivalent to today's entire workforce of the UK and, e and Egypt combined. It's not an, an one thing or the other. We can do both. We can build back better, meaning we can create uh, greener jobs through uh, the energy transition. And then it's so important to put a big emphasis on, on fairness. It's not only about greener, greening our uh, energy uh, grid, but also creating universal access to energy services, a quality energy for all, and, and creating the conditions for every, every single person to get uh, connected to this uh, as a possibility, including, of course, the, the uh, requirement of the just transition for those workers and communities that have to move to a zero carbon future. All of this is absolutely possible, but we need high ambition and, and accelerate our action in order for all of this uh, to happen. Yeah, let, let me just give a, you know, a couple of examples of, of accelerating action. You know, the RE100 memberships, that's companies committed to source 100% of their electricity from renewable sources, grown by 20% last year. That's now at 268 companies. That was one five years ago, right? Um, so, you know, we, we, we're really supportive of everybody getting you know, any companies listening. If you're not already in, join now. Um, um, Climate Group are doing a great job. We want to get the 400 companies um, signed up to RE100 by COP26. 
Also, we've seen strong renewables investment, 35 billion in the first half of 2020. That's already, you know, that, that's significant growth from last year. And as Gonzalo says, there's a real opportunity with COVID recovery measures to put the sector on track for 1.5 degrees. La last thing I should say is we call these sessions the race to zero dialogue. So yes, it's a race, it's urgent. Yes, we're getting to zero, but we call it a dialogue for a reason as well. It's not a debate where, you, where somebody wins. You know, the, the debate etymologically comes from the same word as batter um, or combat. This is a dialogue where we have an opportunity to hear from people with different perspectives, all committed to the transition, but all grappling with it from a different perspective. So I really encourage everyone to take full use of the opportunity to listen respectfully. Um, and some, and that, that means we're allowed to disagree, right? Um, because in that in that disagreement, in that respectful listening, there's a chance that we learn, and through that learning, we can go even faster. So that we go back to the race to zero. Thank you, Gonzalo. And and as you mentioned, uh, Nigel, uh, COVID has also put an end, put us into the track uh, in a much faster way. The transformation to look at our energy system is already underway. We have seen uh, renewable energy that has increased its share of electricity production to record levels since the onset of the pandemic. Of course, we would never be celebrating uh, all of the, uh, the, the situation that, that we have to suffer because of the pandemic. And at the same time, there is here one element of hope that is mobilizing the whole economy of the world. We have seen during this uh, last period individual energy companies such as Orsted or, or Iberdrola that have reinvented their business models uh, for the energy transformation. We have strong evidence of the tipping point to a renewable energy dominated system. And I think that that is not only a fundamental for this dialogue, this has been fundamental to for all of the fifth previous dialogues and will continue to be for the other areas. So um, of course, as, as you said, the, the dialogue should be allowing us to uh, reach those common parameters but also should be an invitation for everybody, everybody to join the race to see if you're not uh, already there. We know we can win this, uh, this race to zero emissions together. We, we need to be together in order to do that. So uh, having said that, and I'm being absolutely excited about everything that we'll uh, be uh, listening today, it is a great pleasure to introduce Mr. Francesco La Camera, Director General of IRENA, and use this opportunity uh, as, as Nigel referred to, to thank Irina for both its uh, the, for, for leading the group within the Marrakesh Partnership uh, for Global Climate Action, as well as for the work on energy transition globally. You are a reference not only for us as high level champions, but for many people around the world uh, that are looking for your work in order to follow that. We would also like to thank the other members of the energy group that uh, you have uh, mentioned, um, uh, Elizabeth, but let me refer to them. The Climate Group, International Chamber of Commerce, the International Energy Agency, REN21, uh, uh, um, SE for All, UNEP, uh, World Business Council for Sustainable Development, all of them who support the preparation of the climate action pathways and this energy dialogue. So thanks so much. Over to you, Francesco.